Coach, last week you said uh, you'd call it and they'd ball it. Uh, was it as pretty as it looked uh, on film when you uh, looked at it this week? It's definitely a start for us. Uh, you know, you got to always have a starting place and a starting point. You know, a Sunday was with, with the way we executed and, and the out, outcome that we got. So, you know, you just always want to see where you're at. And then, uh, again, like you've heard me talk about before, it's about steady progression and us trying to improve and get better week in and week out. Coach, when you looked at the film of Shane, what did you like and what are the things he, he needs to improve on? Uh, just liked, you know, the fact uh, that he executed, you know, and, and did, did a lot of things uh, well that we asked him to do. But, but just like I said, you know, anytime, especially when you're young, uh, you got a, you got a lot of room for growth and a lot of room for improvement. So, you know, that's our goal right now at, at every position with, with every kid is, is let's get better. You know, be f focused on us and, and continue to drive yourself, motivate yourself to be better. Uh, Sterling, now that it's over, uh, how would you explain what the thought process was and how you would rotate those guys? Was it situational? Was it based on field location? What, what was the thought process? Um, whatever it was going to take to win, you know. So just, you know, situation of the game, whatever was going on. I mean, at at, at the end of the day, our mindset was whatever was going to help us win at that moment and put ourselves in a situation to be successful is, is the reason we did what we did. Uh, on the first end, I think he ran the ball 25 times out of like 32. You think he can be that predictable as a rule this season, or is that just a special case? Uh, it's the first game, you know. Yeah. So we got a lot of football left and a lot of first downs left. Right. All right. So again, whatever situation, scenario we feel like is going to give us the best opportunity to win and have the outcome we want at the end of the day is what we'll do. Mr. Lincoln, uh, you talk about Alex Anderson and him coming in and given what he gave you and his evolution and what Perkins said after the game? Uh, you know, the biggest thing with, with any guys that come in and fill in for somebody, you know, we have a next man up mentality and our guys got to do a great job of being prepared week in and week out. Um, you know, each guy knows he's one play away. So, you know, really good to him and, and his focus, uh, you know, throughout camp and obviously preparation for the Notre Dame game that he was prepared when that opportunity came, so. Sterling, um, coming in, why did, what was it about Tyrone that you kind of liked and why did you kind of decide to employ your own 18-wheeler package with your new, the new offense you brought? Well, the things that, I, that, that we like and love about Tyrone, there's nothing kind of about it, you know, and I spoke about it last week. He's a, he's a big, strong, great athlete. He's highly, highly competitive. He's a great person. Um, you know, and we knew, had a really good feeling uh, about the things we wanted to do with him. You know, and those are just things that we've carried in our offense. And, um, you know, this about being creative and, and being able to set up and put guys in a situation to be successful. Coach, the, uh, a lot of the look is on the, the quarterback, but Foreman, what he did in the ground game, how important is he to keeping this whole offense going the way you hope it to go? Yeah, the, both of those backs did a really good job. Um, you know, and just establishing the run game, which we were able to, you know, to have some success on on the ground. But, you know, both of those guys, uh, you know, toting the rock and being able to do what they do, being big and being physical and being able to run downhill, they did a good job. But, you know, obviously, uh, just as any of those other guys, we need those guys to be playmakers as well and, and uh, you know, get be able to get carries out of them and get execution out of them. Sterling, uh, John Burr, I believe, yesterday said an interesting comment that how close you guys are and the, the receivers, the offense, he says you're like a bro. Describe that relationship <laughs> you guys have and uh, kind of elaborate what he's talking about. It's funny you ask because I ask him the, the same question. What does that, what do you mean? And, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Um, his answer was, he said, Coach, it's how you interact with us. So, you know, I took that as a positive, and I probably reached back to being a high school football coach uh, and how we are with our kids. Everything's based on relationships and being able to relate to kids, and especially young kids, you know, and that's our job. So, you know, if that's the interaction and that's the, the phrase he wanted to tag with that, I guess that's what I got to live with. But, again, it goes back to being, a, being relatable to kids and having great relationships with kids. Also, we're not going to see the head coach again the rest of the week, but I wanted to ask you, all these guys, you know, they know what's out there in the media too. Being ranked 11th in the AP poll, what what was the message to them today after only one game? Uh, I mean, huge jump and a huge publicity, but still just one game. 
Our focus is, is solely on the University of Texas and us. I mean, that, that's us, the University of Texas. Our focus is on us, all right, and getting us better. We're going to take it one week at a time. Our, our opponent this week is, is UTEP. But our extreme focus is on us and us improving and getting better with, every, you know, fundamentally technique-wise and everything that we want to, you know, execute and, and get accomplished. But, you know, we got a good opponent, obviously, in UTEP coming into town. Um, and that's what that's our sole focus right now. But, but we're gonna we're working on us and, and improving us. Sterling, who was on the headset with you in the press box, and how did the communication go as far as getting plays in and all? Yeah, there's a couple guys that, that were on the headsets up there. Uh, communication went well. You know, considering it was the first game, you're in you're in battle with a, with some guys, um, several guys that you haven't worked with previous. Um, you know, so so like anything, uh, you get a couple of you know, practice top deals with that before, beforehand. But uh, communication was great. Is there any reason you don't want to sit here on the headset with? Just, just a couple of those QC guys and and yeah. uh, GA guys are up there. Sterling, the um, Colin Johnson and Devin. Any reason why they weren't in the rotation this game, or what they need to work on to get in it? No, you know, uh, I think Colin got a couple of plays, and and uh, again. You know, our ultimate goal every day, every time we step on the field is to win. And, you know, we're making decisions based on that. Those guys are very, very talented. It's a long season. And those guys, uh, before this thing is over, are going to contribute to what we got going on offense. Not the Longhorn Network. Uh, Gilbert, some of the guys were talking about how in, in years past, uh, coaches have talked about wanting to speed the tempo up. And it didn't work out. Why did this work out so quickly with this group? And how quickly did it, did it work? Um, you know, I think you, looking back at that, that question, I'll probably go back to, you know, myself and, and Matt being with me about installing this thing several times and having a good hand on that, a good grasp of that. Um, and, and it really goes to our kids. You know, like I said, we, we've got to be able to go out, we give it to them, we install it to them, but at the end of the day, they got to go execute it. Did, so, it, did so, it meet your expectations in terms of speed? Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, like I said before, but there's uh, – um, you know, there's still room for improvement, but uh, you know, the, it, that times on Sunday we had, you know, we had decent pace. Sterling, what didn't you like? Uh, I know it was a, a big scoring bonanza, but I'm, not, I'm sure there are some areas that you noticed that needed to be cleaned up. What are those? You know, just eliminating, not only lessening, but trying, you know, to eliminate penalties. Um, just being able to uh, execute and being able to make sure that that uh, you know, we execute the things that we practice every day, fundamental-wise, technique-wise, scheme-wise. Uh, you know, there, there was times that we were you know, a little inconsistent with that. So just trying to be more consistent uh, with what and how we do things. Sterling, how did Gerard Hurd being in the quarterback room before his position change help him now? I think that was very advantageous for him. Uh, when you start there, you know, from a scheme standpoint, you, you really get everything. So in that aspect, you just go back to when he was in that room. You know, he pretty much had everything and had to know everything, what was going on. So, you know, then you move to the receiver room, which is which is still not an easy transition. And um, that guy's, you know, really athletic. He's really honed in. He's really focused, uh, motivated, and determined about being a really good receiver. So he's jumped in wholeheartedly uh, with that, what, we, what he wanted to do. And uh, you know what we've asked him to do, but uh, because he started in there, I think I think it gave him an advantage. Coach, is, is Jake Oliver a guy who benefited from having a blank slate, you know, with you? And maybe what did he has he done to kind of earn your trust, and you know why you use him so much? You know, the thing that sticks out with Jake is the word is is consistency. You know, um, and, and I'm, I might quote this wrong if, if it's changed since, but I know one time I think he was all time leader of the state of Texas with reception. So, guys, really good ball skills. And, uh, you know, with that comes consistency. So, he's a guy that's consistent. Uh, you know, he's knowledgeable about what we're trying to do schematically. And, uh, you know, does a, does a great job in those two, you know, those two areas. Still so talking uh, specifically about the 18 wheeler package. Um, the, the coaching staff last year, they obviously built up a bank of data on what opposing defensive coordinators can do or will try to do. How much are you curious to see what kind of defensive adaptations you'll see 
you know, starting this week, frankly, and going forward, how teams respond to swoops defensively? You know, anytime you're in a game with with whatever your scheme is, be it that or, or you know, just our norm, normal personnel out there, you're always interested to, to see what kind of changes you got going on. So, you know, that's the life we live in as coaches. It's about being able to adjust and adapt and, and see and make changes. And, um, you know, we that's how we feel about that, you know, just as we do our normal personnel on the field. Going, going back to Bert after he dropped the ball, but with the same play pretty soon after that, was that a message in any way, or is that just a play you thought was going to work? Um, a message as far as what? Like to, to give him another shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's we believe in that kid, you know, and he believes in himself. And, uh, I mean, that guy can run. So we just, again, you know, part of our scheme of what we do and, you know, let him loose one more time. So, Sterling, um, did you know the stage would not be too big? for Shane, or did you have to see it? You know, you're uh, you're always anticipating and, uh, you know, believing things. But for him to go out and execute at the level he did um, with the demeanor that he did, you know, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was impressive and exciting to, uh, to see the things that he did. And like I said, just the room and, and that he has for growth in the direction, you know, that, that will go and that he needs to take himself. Coach, what's the biggest improvement Shane Buchel needs to make heading into week two? Just continue to know exactly what we're doing schematically, uh, being able to know fast, and you know just continue to, to be better in every phase um, you know, as a quarterback. How many plays didn't Shane change that you had called? Uh, not very many, not very many. Any great results from ones he did call? Yeah. They were all they were all successful. I mean, touchdown. Any examples? Um, I don't know if they were touchdowns. I don't think they were touchdowns, but they were all they were all uh, decent gains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any any reason why Deontay was really productive and Chris wasn't? I don't think I could put a put a thumb on that. Um, you know, sometimes. Just holes are different, you know, for for guys when they get out there. Then that doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily fall fall on the back. So, um, no, you know, there's really nothing behind that. Coach um, Shane said one thing that helped him out a lot was that you were pretty much the same during the game as you are in practice and all the time with him. Is that personality by design, or is that just who you are? Um, no, I mean, I think that's who I am. You know, when you're. Uh, when you're a former quarterback and, and a coach and, and a coordinator, you know, we talk about it in our room all the time, never too high and never too low, always in the middle. And that, you know, that's something I was taught at a young age, uh, did as a, you know, did as a player. And then as a coach, you got to got to live that life, especially as a quarterback coach and, uh, and a coordinator, but especially with your quarterback. If you're going to ask him to do that, you know, then the guy that's coaching him uh, probably needs to live by that as well. So, uh, you know, just the way just the way I am and, and um, you know, obviously the way he is and his personality, I mean, it's a, it's a good mesh. Got time for two last ones. Coach, can you talk about the atmosphere the other night? And what, was it what you expected? Yeah, it was special. Uh, you know, it was a special and it was electric. Uh, obviously, um, y'all can probably quote the number of people that were in the, in the, in the stands, mm -hmm. but uh, I know it was a lot, but, you know, just special. You know, unique and and a great opportunity to to be at home and start right here. You know, at the University of Texas, uh, being able to play at home and being able to play in front of our great fans and and um, you know had a lot of family and special friends there. So you know, it was it was special. Sterling, one. what uh, obviously there were a couple snaps from Shackelford that got away. Anything you noticed? Was it fatigue? Anything? Any reason behind that? No, I mean no, nothing that's not fixable. Yeah, nothing that's not fixable. Thank you, Sterling. Thank you, Sterling. Appreciate it.